start of our second FD Seattle video. We are in the car with Trenton from Y Plate. Beautiful new, this is the S7? S7, yeah. It's making me excited for my Audi. But the team has been hustling, got the engine all back together in the car, and we're on our way to meet them at the dyno. We're going to a place called, is it Intech? Intech Racing. Uh, one of Trenton's friends, Nikolai, has a sweet car hauler that picked up the S15. It looks so cool. I think this bottom end's a lot more similar to our old setup than we initially thought. We thought it was like 11 to 1, but it does look like it's the same, if not within a half point of compression of the old bottom end that we had. So putting it on the dyno is more of just a preventative measure because it probably will be pretty close to being on point with the old tune, um, but we'll find out. Before we hop on the dyno, I want to give a massive shout out to one of my sponsors, ShipStation. The holiday season's right around the corner, and if you guys are in the e commerce world you know a lot of people are gonna be placing orders online you got to make sure you can hold up to the demands of shipping all those orders out ship station is the fastest easiest and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders doesn't matter if you're selling on Amazon Etsy or your own website ship station has an interface that's super easy and within a few clicks you could be shipping printing labels and taking advantage of their deep discounted rates ShipStation works with all the major carriers, USPS, UPS, FedEx, International, and you get to leverage their discounts, which are usually only for like Fortune 500 companies. As I've told you guys before, it has transformed our operations. The guys back home while we're at FD have actually been shipping out all the product from that last drop, and they've been hauling and getting orders out at lightning speed thanks to ShipStation. As of right now, you guys can try ShipStation for free for the next 60 days. All you gotta use is my code, AdamLZ. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of a massive online shopping season. When you're on ShipStation, website all you gotta do is click the microphone at the top type in Adam LZ and that's it just shipstation.com Adam LZ is the code go and make ship happen and I gotta give a massive thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring this video now let's go see what the car does on the dyno Freddie what do you think about the new engine it sounds quieter that's good yeah, <laughs> like like mechanical ticking noise is less. So what's the plan? Um, just put it on wastegate spring and give it a pull. Something, damn it. I'm tired. <laughs> Me too. Or y'all are. It's good. It's healthy. Good. Yeah. Time for nitrous. It does look like it makes a little bit less than last time, but that's probably just accounted to uh, gearing and dyno differences. Freddie said the only real changes he had to make to the map was adding a little bit more fuel, which is probably from a half point higher compression. So fun fact, we were actually spinning the whole time. Um, we were actually making somewhere around 940 horsepower. Uh, because it was spinning, it wasn't reading right. So now you can see the actual graph and then you can see uh, the difference when we add the nitrous as a spool aid. Um, brings the torque on quite a bit sooner. Saturday and it's gonna be the first day of competition 
Uh, they announced the brackets actually like a week or two ago and I'm gonna be going up against Gucci. My biggest concern right now is getting my lead lines dialed and actually after watching the footage that you guys saw in the last video, it was super, super clear to me that uh, I need to make some setup changes with the car. Most of all, if you watch the footage back, you can see I'm basically buried on limiter, driving extremely shallow, and the car wants to ride an inside line. No matter if I entered with more momentum, it continually wanted to fall down, and what that says to me is I need more wheel speed. So we've changed the rear gear, and we might potentially actually go uh, to a shorter gear and then run fifth instead of running fourth with a longer gear, but uh, that's something we're gonna have to figure out in practice. We'll have about four laps to figure it out, so we're gonna be making some setup changes as well. A uh, very common thing for FD cars on bank tracks is to actually run a different setup on that out outside rear wheels so people will run a little bit less toe a little more air pressure different shock settings so we're gonna try that and uh, hope we can get it dialed in enough to where I can be confident in my lead line because I'm not too worried about chase I just need to make sure I put down a chaseable lead so right now that's gonna be my focus we'll probably have about two or three laps in practice that we can squeeze in and we'll go from there but then we run into the fun of Seattle where we show up to the track and 90% uh, of the track is actually dry, so we're gonna have to now revert from what we had planned, which was our wet setup, back to the dry setup. And I don't know if I want it to rain or if I don't want it to rain. It's a good question. The car didn't have oiling issues in the rain, so I guess I want it to rain. I think one thing that it was kind of glazed over that I didn't really put enough emphasis on, the fact that the team was able to get together, putting together basically an entire long block at the track is no small feat. And to be able to just throw it right on the dyno, have no issues and have it run strong, um, looking over at the gears again, one thing we did decide to do, I'm actually going to run 5th today instead of 4th because we couldn't put a long enough gear in the rear end to get the mile an hour that I wanted. So by running 5th with a little bit shorter gear ratio, it'll have me with about 10 mile an hour more wheel speed to play with on the bank and hopefully get me to that outer edge. But the track is patchy so I'm going to have to be careful and just do my best. Actually a lot of crashes in practice and although the car felt way better I would have liked to have gotten more runs in to get comfortable with the new setup uh, but yet again that's still another thing that you don't really see behind the scenes of FD I know when I used to watch I was super judgmental and I was like how the heck are these guys driving spinning out not running the right line but what you don't see is some of these guys get like maybe two laps of practice the day before or like in this case one lap of practice and uh, the other day I think what do we get like four so you know five total laps on a brand new track brand new setup it's really hard to adapt, but um, I guess that's one of those things that just comes with time. I'm gonna do my best. I feel way more confident in the car now. Uh, I'm just gonna send it.
and uh, I I, uh, I found out that they actually uh, they had to swap his engine out as well from I believe Thursday to Friday. Adam LZ is ready to go. He's ready to throw down here. Ken Gushi will lead in that uh, in that uh, Rowdy Energy Toyota Racing Toyota Supra. Adam LZ, here we go. Let's send it. Gushi out front. Adam LZ in the chase position through the stretch chicane. Let's see if this FD rookie can take down the OG, Ken Gushi. Ken Gushi throwing it down. Big angle there on the bank. Adam LZ, a couple car distances behind. Still mimicking the angle. Man, really holding on to that angle. Coming out down to the power alley. Adam LZ quickly dips that back left. Chromed out, blinged out. Three-piece wheel now transitioning into that last outside zone. Good flick by LZ. Gushi does not get all the way out there. Neither does Adam LZ. Ryan, this looks like... I, I, by no offense is that is this an offense, but it looks like a Pro 2 battle. There. We saw the kind of, they need to tidy it up here on the second round. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, an another takeaway is it was that was also probably the most complete and settled that we've seen LZ so far in the tough battles that he's had against former champions. Now going up against a vet veteran in Ken Gushi, you can see Gushi kind of starts pretty high on the bank. LZ was trying to maintain the correct line. He falls back a little bit. Gushi now coming through the power alley here. You can see as he comes off, that little dip right there, that decel zone gets right in that second outside zone. A little bit tighter there is LZ, and he's using that to gain proximity, so he's making a little bit of a sacrifice. But nice dip in there to try to gain proximity, but then again, he will be on a little bit of a tighter line. So I think this is the best LZ we've seen so far in the times that we've seen from the two rounds in St. Louis. And Ken Gushi's definitely going to have to step up his chase game here because now we've seen LZ was able to keep proximity. Even though he didn't follow the exact line, like in this section here, you can see he doesn't go out to outside zone three. He did keep the pressure on and a nice little flick to tuck up on the inside to try to follow Ken out. And came off the line a little bit, but still pretty strong performance overall. Yeah. Supra, the Gazoo Racing, and uh, for for Ken, he's feeling it. I, I, you know, again, he he wants it to rain. He likes. The, he says my car likes the rain, so I'm with it. Here we go. Adam LZ will lead. Racing as the really fast on the bank. Great angle, man. Really throwing down. Not shaking Ken Gushi. Oh, look at the LZ massive angle now coming to the power alley. Oh my goodness, Ken Gushi absolutely smoking it off of the bank and exceeds all four tires off. Ryan, that could be really devastating for the Goosh. Coming in that last outside zone. Oh, man. Oh, very unfortunate there for Gushi. I think he was shaken coming off the bank, Ryan. Yeah, he definitely did not help his cause there. And coming off the bank from outside zone one, that really long outside zone that basically is the entire bank, uh, has been problematic for some drivers in terms of finding the proper speed and momentum to exit the bank. You can see Gucci starts losing a little bit of angle here, probably realizes, you know, I need to catch up, but I need to get on the right line, and almost the car starts understeering as he comes through the smoke line, he goes four tires off. So that's going to be an incomplete in the chase, and I feel like that's going to be pretty hard to overcome just because LZ did not incomplete in either of his runs. So this, this right now, we're on the precipice of a pretty big upset here for LZ, who may be getting his first win in the Pro Championship. Look at LZ, how long he stays high on the bank. That I mean, that's a great line. And, and to his defense, basically, it seemed that Ken Gushi couldn't hold on and hold that angle as high as Adam was. And even in the chase, he still held that higher line, which is incorrect from a chase driver, but he still had that 
that high line. Some of the drivers are having a little bit more trouble with, but Adam LZ held it together. He, yep. he just dropped a tire barely over the line, and Gucci had a poor line from end of outside zone one to that area, and you can see that he just overshot. Very unfortunate for Ken Gucci, but you know who's dope? Adam LZ gets the win. Adam LZ will be moving on into the top 16. We did it! We won our first battle at FB. James is shaking. I'm shaking. Well, this is just the beginning. The car feels great. I'm going to hold it, James. I think I'm less shaky than you. Um, I made it happen. I definitely went off and missed one of the zones. I'll have to watch the footage back, but we did what we had to do. And we're moving on to the top 16. Let's go, man. Chris Ewell, Brian Egger, and Ryan Lante criticizing, critiquing, and judging. Round, top 16, round three. Michael Essa throws it in really high on the bank. Adam LZ tucking in. Just about a car length behind. Great mimicking of the angle. A little bit lower. Let's see how he handles. Dropping in from the bank, taking that title line of Adam LZ. Coming into that second outer zone. Good job through the power alley. Looks like dry conditions as of right now. We'll see if that holds. Michael Essa. Bringing into that final outside zone, the Achilles tire spoke all over the track. Both these gentlemen on Achilles radials. The official tire of the Link Engine Management Pro 2 Championship. That was a great battle. Yeah, after last year with Adam LZ, I certainly felt that he deserved to be in Pro 1. And, you know, after a shaky start in St. Louis, we're starting to see him get a bit more settled here. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a champion that he's going up against in Michael Essa. Doing a pretty good job on proximity. Comes down a little bit lower on the line. Has to make an adjustment, so makes a mistake there. But Michael Essa does as well. He makes a little adjustment there. Not as big. He is able to fill that second outside zone and also the third. And then keep it nice and smooth here. But that gives an opportunity as Michael Essa does a great lead for Adam LZ to kind of chase him down. We know that great, great chases always come about because of quality leads. And that's where you see that little mistake there by Adam and the slight one there by Michael Essa as well. at the heels of Adam LZ. And Adam, I think, is going to be really comfortable here out front, getting the fresh air. Let's see how LZ handles it. Again, it's the first top 16 in pro competition. Going against, like you said, Ryan, a former champ. LZ initiates really high on the bank. Look at Michael Essa sweating him right now, dropping in into that power alley. Now, oh man, that smoke really getting oh. Essa's face. Oh, and a massive mistake there by Michael Essa. 
and I think he was blinded by the smoke. Like I said, that Achilles tire smoke, some of the thickest here on track. LZ dips just barely a tread of that Achilles tire into that last outer zone, Ryan, but that was a big mistake. Both of them, you know, LZ had the mistake on the inside. Now, Essa really big on the outside, but some great driving to kick off top 16. Yeah, let's take a look at this again here. Really interesting battle between a former champion in Michael Essa and a rookie in Adam LZ. Here comes Essa pouring wow. on the pressure, but he gets a little bit too far inside here, and then he has to fall back, and like you said, maybe gets lost in the smoke. Here it is from another angle once again. Super close, has to angle up. There's the smoke cloud, and he goes a little bit too far, almost three tires off, loses some ground, but a wide swing right there by Adam LZ allows Michael Essa to catch back up and close the door for the remainder of the run. LZ makes a slight mistake by not getting into outside zone number four. So we saw some mistakes back and forth. And uh, this is a close one here, Jared. Both drivers with a couple of errors that the judges can point out. Does it put the direction of the judges vote in one way or the other? You will find out here shortly. So Chris Ewell says Michael Essa. Ryan Lontaine says one more time. And Brian Eggert says Michael Essa gets the win now. Hey, Mike, we got some Stancy Boy tires for you. Look, this was left foot brake the entire run. I think it was behind Essa. So one of the things I think moving into tomorrow, um, one of the changes that we're going to make on the car, I was going to say it in the video, but actually I don't think I'm going to say it because we've recently found out that other teams are watching these videos and taking the information and using it to adjust their setups when they battle us. So I'm going to have this conversation off camera. We'll talk with Jins right now. All right, so we just officially lost our very first top 16 battle. I brought Jinj over. Jinj has been doing all the spotting to explain to you guys why we lost. I know there's a lot of uh, kind of misunderstanding. A lot of you guys don't necessarily watch Formula Drift or understand a lot of the calls. Uh, a lot of people on the comments are saying, oh, it's a bogus call. So I thought we should do our best to explain to you why we lost. Yep, so uh, both runs look decent. Like your your lead one run was, was great. And uh, I think the errors were made in the follows of both drivers. So Adam had two off in the front. Uh, Essa had two off in the rear. So from the judge's perspective, we had one judge judge one more time. Uh, two others voted for Essa. Uh, the one more time judge was stating that uh, both drivers made kind of equal mistakes of two tires off and they wanted to see the run again. Um, the other judges favored in, in Essa due to seeing him basically two tires off deeper in his zone where Adam was shallower in his zone and being shallower in his zone is not as favorable. Uh, so from Adam's perspective, he saw um, Essa check up on the bank, uh, which is outside of a decel zone. Which I'll explain. It's like, I, like, it's hard to see on video. I mean, you guys might have been able to see it from the in-car GoPro. To me, it almost looked like he grabbed the handbrake, but later now I found out that he actually hit the wall a little bit. Because I saw the back end of his car kind of upset, and my mind was like, oh crap, he's grabbing the handbrake. I need to grab the handbrake so I don't hit him. Um, and what that kind of did is it drove me down and I was very far inside and like you said, I dropped my two front wheels. Yes. But even though I dropped two front wheels and he dropped two rear wheels, uh, I think the logic is potentially that on my lead, I was coming down sooner on the bank because usually they judge lead for lead and then follow for follow. Uh, I think it was, it was on the verge of being protestable. I think if it was a one more time, I don't think anyone would have been like, oh my God, that's a bogus one more time. Um, but I don't think it was an unfair call. So. I would have liked to see it one more time, and like we said, we debated uh, protesting the call. Um, but looking at how Pro 2 did, where we had guys bouncing off the wall left and right, and drivers behind them checking up, there was no protest during that, given that was in very rainy and you know bad weather. Uh, this is still kind of in that same situation. It's a very gray area. If it was protested, it would be like by the skin of our teeth, and uh, I don't think it would have been a solid protest call, um, and that's why I chose not to protest. That, that call and we'll just look forward to tomorrow. I think it makes sense and like I've said before the beauty of this season is that we do get a second chance tomorrow. I'll say just making it in the top 16 alone was like huge for me. Like I was borderline on the brink of tears just after the shit that we've been through with this car and yeah. me feeling like I, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Like I was texting Colette I was like man like I think I just want to stick to drifting in Japan. This stuff is just <laughs> This stuff's a little much for me, so to be able to go out there and actually win a battle in Pro 1, uh, both is huge for me, I think it's huge for the team and everybody who's super happy, you know, everyone's been working so hard and they're the reasons why I was able to do this and why I was able to get that win. But I think more than anything, all the people that are on the internet saying, you don't belong here, you don't belong here, hopefully this shows them that like, we're, we're, 
we're the real deal. Like we're doing everything we can. I think it's gonna take a little while to figure out the setups, get out committed to all the other drivers. And like I said before, this is the season to do it. So yeah. overall though, I'm super pumped. I'm, I'm very excited happy. for tomorrow. And uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. When you say